When Musk first announced his plans for Starship, many were skeptical. The idea that a newcomer in the aerospace sector like SpaceX could build the world's largest rocket seemed unrealistic. Critics pointed out the company's lack of a long history in the industry. However, what the doubters overlooked was the track record and determination of the man leading SpaceX. Musk had already turned several industries on their heads, proving time and again that he could achieve what others deemed impossible. Now the Starship project has become a reality, drawing significant interest from major government entities like the Pentagon, who see its potential for transforming space travel and more. The government's interest in SpaceX's Starship is a very unique one. It proposes a unique operational model where the rocket could not only serve governmental needs, but also be government owned and operated. This is very different from traditional arrangements between the government and private aerospace entities. In the past, rockets like NASA's Saturn V and the Space Shuttle were entirely developed, owned, and operated by the government, with private companies playing only supporting roles. This traditional model allowed governments complete control over space missions and the design and operation of spacecraft. However, the space industry has changed significantly with companies like SpaceX entering the scene. These companies not only develop spacecraft, but also operate them, offering their services to the government and other clients. This approach has led to faster innovation and lower costs in space exploration. The idea of the government owning and operating Starship could provide SpaceX with steady government funding, which might help speed up the development of Starship. It could also ensure SpaceX's involvement in future missions related to national security and space exploration, providing strategic benefits. On the other hand, this model raises questions about SpaceX's control over Starship. Allowing the government to own and operate Starship could limit SpaceX's ability to decide how the rocket is used, potentially affecting the company's broader goals, such as Mars colonization. There are also concerns about how the government might use Starship, including the possibility of militarization, which could conflict with SpaceX's vision. Additionally, SpaceX's culture of innovation and fast development might clash with the typically slower and more bureaucratic processes of government projects. The government's interest in SpaceX's Starship has been there for quite some time. The unique aspects of Starship, from its design to its capabilities, distinguish it significantly from traditional rockets, making it a focal point for potential governmental use. Starship is designed with full reusability in mind, a feature that sets it apart from the expendable rockets of the past. Its design as a fully reusable spacecraft capable of carrying crew and cargo to various destinations, including Earth orbit, the Moon, and Mars, is revolutionary. When combined with its super-heavy booster, Starship reaches an approximate height of 120 meters, making it the tallest rocket design built to date. This size is not just for show, but is necessary to accommodate the engines, fuel, and cargo needed for its ambitious missions. The thrust capability of Starship is also unprecedented. The sheer power of the super-heavy booster comes from its array of Raptor engines, which are unlike any other engines used in previous or current rockets in terms of technology, fuel choice, and performance. The super-heavy booster is equipped with up to 33 Raptor engines. These engines are full-flow staged combustion cycle engines, a significant advancement over the gas generator cycle, and staged combustion cycle engines used in many existing rockets. The full-flow staged combustion cycle allows for a more efficient use of fuel and oxidizer, providing higher performance and reliability. Each Raptor engine is capable of producing approximately kilonewtons of thrust at sea level, with the total thrust of the super-heavy booster expected to exceed 70,000 kilonewtons, or approximately 16 million pounds of thrust. This figure surpasses the thrust capabilities of any rocket currently in operation or development, including the Saturn V rocket used in the Apollo missions, which produced about 7.9 million pounds of thrust. The second stage of the system, the Starship spacecraft itself, is powered by six Raptor engines optimized for vacuum conditions, providing the necessary thrust to navigate and maneuver in space after separating from the super-heavy booster. 
These vacuum-optimized Raptors have a slightly higher specific impulse, a measure of engine efficiency, and are designed to maximize performance in the vacuum of space. A key distinction of the Raptor engine is its fuel choice, methane and liquid oxygen. Methane can be efficiently produced on Mars, aligning with SpaceX's long-term vision of Mars colonization and enabling potential refueling on the Martian surface for return missions to Earth or further space exploration. Methane also burns cleaner than the kerosene used in many other rocket engines, resulting in less suit buildup in the engine, which is beneficial for the reusability aspect of the Starship system. Additionally, methane's higher performance as a rocket fuel, when combined with liquid oxygen in the full-flow staged combustion cycle, provides a higher specific impulse compared to traditional rocket fuels, making it a superior choice for the ambitious missions Starship aims to undertake. Starship's payload capacity is another area where it outshines its predecessors. Capable of transporting up to 100 tons, Starship is not only suitable for satellite deployments but also for more ambitious missions, such as carrying humans and supplies to the Moon and Mars. For context, the Saturn V rocket, which powered the Apollo missions to the Moon, had a maximum payload capacity to low Earth orbit of about 140 tons. While Saturn V remains the most powerful rocket successfully flown, its use was limited to a specific set of missions during the Apollo era, and it was not designed with reusability in mind. Starship, on the other hand, not only approaches the payload capacity of Saturn V, but does so with a design that emphasizes full reusability. And when compared to the Falcon 9, the differences become even more pronounced. The Falcon 9 can deliver up to 22 tons to low Earth orbit, which is significantly less than Starship's capacity. The Falcon Heavy, a more powerful variant that combines three Falcon 9 first stages, increases this capacity to approximately 63 tons to the low Earth orbit, but still falls short of Starship's 100-ton potential. The government's growing interest in Starship can be traced back to its test flights, which have been critical in demonstrating the spacecraft's potential, despite the challenges faced during these early tests, including some explosive outcomes. Each flight has provided valuable data that SpaceX has used to refine Starship's design and improve its performance. And now, SpaceX is preparing for the third test flight in February. The focus is on demonstrating key technologies for lunar landings as part of NASA's Artemis program. This upcoming flight will also include a demonstration of propellant transfer capabilities, a crucial step for future missions. The exact launch date depends on obtaining an updated Federal Aviation Administration license. Corrective actions from the second test flight are being addressed to secure this license. And that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed watching or found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.